a great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Zikui Liu. Um, Zikui is the um, um, Dorothy Pate Onright Professor of Material Science and Engineering at uh, Penn State. Um, Zikui uh, received his PhD from KTH in Sweden, and he has been at Penn State since 1999. I believe the, the reason is obvious, Penn State has the, one of the best MSE program in the nation. Um, Zikui works at the frontier of um, first principles calculation, data science, and machine learning, and integrate them and apply them to uh, solve uh, thermodynamic, kinetic, mechanical problems, and especially the calculation of phase diagrams and material design discovery. And Zikui is the author of more than uh, 500 publications. Um, Zikui is the recipient of a long list of awards including uh, the Hume Rothery Award. And that TMS was actually held here in Phoenix and I was among the speakers to celebrate it with you. And uh, the Gibbs um, Face Equilibrium Award. And also uh, Zikui was elected um, as a TMS fellow this year. Congratulations. And uh, Zikui is um, um, president of the ASM International. Um, uh, he's on the board of the ASM um, board of trustees and the TMS um, board of directors. And 20 years ago, Zikui created, created a term of uh, materials genome, and this has connected uh, material science to data science and create a new direction of research. So with this, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Chi Jun. And uh, I still remember about 20 years ago, uh, Chi Jun's advisor, Axe, and I met at one of the meetings, and uh, I, I really admired his work. I asked him to write a paper about his program, and the paper is one of his top citations today. That was uh, about 20 years ago. All right, that's fantastic. Well, I want to thank uh, Krishna and Kuma for uh, giving me the opportunity to present the uh, work here about uh, Zentropy. So I believe I shared the screen already. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go to the screen. I need to close this one. I assume everybody can see my screen. Uh, I'm going to start. All right. Uh, so my title, right? The, the title eBay to everybody was a bit longer, so I'll make it shorter. I got a Zen job. My name is Zikui Liu. I'm from Pennsylvania State University. Uh, this is our group website in case you would like to browse to see what we have there. Okay, uh, I started with my talk uh, uh, with Einstein's famous quote. And uh, back in the 1920s, he said, God does not play, God does not play dice with the universe. So what, what did he really meant at that time was God. God, uh, you know, he is not about religion at that time. So God is not a, a religion God. It, what it really means is that he he he's uh, he's not comfortable with quantum mechanics, okay? Because quantum mechanics says it's uncertain. Einstein uh, thought the universe should be certain, and that God will not play dice uh, randomly with us with with the nature. However, you may know that uh, uh, quantum quantum information. Well, just got this, the three people got Nobel Prize in physics this year, just they announced last this week. And it's about quantum. Okay, so quantum is real. Uh, it, it, it affects what we do. Uh, so just to, 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 to emphasize that, to, to how history changes, right? 100 years before, uh, not so many people believed uh, quantum, but today quantum becomes part of our uh, a core component of our science. So if you look at this question, this, this comment by uh, the quote by Einstein, God does not play dice. What does it mean, right? You think of this one, they actually have a few keywords from this uh, statement. One is a God. So what is God, right? Uh, it, it, uh, it, of course, we know that uh, if we, uh, <laughs> whether it exists or not is for debating, uh, but we know it's nature, about science from our point of view. And you play is basically when you play something, you need to have time, you need to have kinetics. You need everything happens. You must have a barrier, so have a kinetics. And then uh, dice, dice basically is what you see, right? With the observation, experiments, 
So that is the outcome of our observations. The universe is based on the system uh, which you study. So it's a thermodynamics because thermodynamics defines system. Now you put this, you put a, what the Einstein said uh, at that time, it's really that uh, we study science, uh, we do thermodynamics, we do kinetics, we do experiments. Okay, so that's basically the idea. Uh, it's really the theme which I'm trying to present today. I know that there are many students here. I hope this can inspire students to think to think broadly uh, about the science uh, uh, as the materials, uh, as one of the key components of science. Okay, so the question is that if if God does that play dice, what dice would he would it be used? And how it will be played? So that's the question. So let's, let's keep that question in mind and see how, how, it, uh, how it evolves. Now you see, you, you see the, you see the curve, right? So now, and so you see the cage and the bird, that's clear, right? Okay, now you see, that's a bird. And if you go back, it's a, it's a cage. Uh, so there's a bird, a cage, right? So you clear that this has two sides. Okay, one's a bird, one's a cage, one's a bird. However, if you play it, you put it slowly, you put it slowly. Okay. <laughs> the question is that we know if you do very slow, you know it's the two sides, they're different. But if you play fast. Uh, the, the bird in the cage. So what does it mean? Does it mean your observation is wrong? Uh, it's illusion, uh, or it's reality? Mm -hmm. So that's very, very interesting. Uh, but you do experiments, right? So you do experiments. Say so you do some, if you, if you, if you spin it very slowly, you see the bird in the cage separately. If you spin fast enough, you see the bird in the cage. So both observations are right. That's what you observe, okay? So that's, uh, so that's actually what, what happened. Right. That's what happened in science. But before I go to science, I, I want to uh, talk about the, how, how important material science is. Uh, materials are yeah, close to it. Is everything okay now? Everything good? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Okay. So if you talk about the materials, we know that the look about the history, we have the Stone Age, that's the natural materials. We, we have uh, human made materials, we get bronze. It's very interesting. Brown is 12% of a team. You ask, why is it 12% team, right? Why is it 12%, not, not 11%, not, not 10%, for example. Uh, and then you, you, we get the Iron Age, okay? Now, then we have the Industrial Revolution. We got the a steam and power, electricity, and the computerization. And then now we're in the materials uh, industry 4.0 is digitization. Okay. So now, if you look at the history about digitization, particularly for in terms of knowledge, you can have, uh, you can make stuff, right? Talk about the materials. So the materials, when you make materials, really you're, you're trying to make the, uh, the materials a certain shape, okay? And then you're going to control the properties. But the properties we know is controlled by the faces you have. Right? So it's really fundamental here, is you have to understand the property of the faces. So how do we understand the property of the faces? Well, we know that's thermodynamics, that's, that's the face stability. If you look at the history of thermodynamics, of course, it goes back a long time ago, but it, the system, it was systemized by Gibbs in the in 1870s, like 150 years ago. And then 100 years later, was it digitized by Kaufman. That's in terms of CAFAD modeling he developed in the 1970s. And 50 years later today, and uh, we, are, we are talking about the uh, material design, now, uh, a lot of them, most of them actually use CAFAD as a base uh, database behind it. So we'll talk about next 50 years or that. So I will give one slide about car fire modeling. It, it basically models a free energy function. It, you typically gives energy function. We use the temp function temperature, pressure, and composition, but I also want to talk about the internal degree of freedom. Okay. And today I was talking with Peter and the Krishna in the morning that the pressure maybe should use the stress, right? Because uh, the for solid phase stress is very important. When this kind of modeling, we started with the, the quantity we measure. We measure the derivatives of the Gibbs energy with the heat capacity, second derivative, entropy, entropy, first derivative, and activity, it's, a, it's also a, a first derivative to the chemical potential. 
And they also measure the phase equilibrium data. They put them together, they divide by Gibbs energy. The question is why this is not enough, right? Because this has a large uncertainty. So you need this one to make the data much, much more accurate. So it can predict the phase transformation much, much accurate uh, compared with the experiment. To that database, you start with the pure elements. You do the binary, we have like 70 some pure elements, uh, you, you, which we use. You have the binary system, internal system, a lot of more and more systems, good multi-component. So basically Kaufman developed this uh, kind of a mechanism to go through that. After you get a fair energy, then you can do the, the material design. Okay, you can do equilibrium because sometimes you want equilibrium high temperature. You can talk about driving force. You want to control driving force nucleation. Then you can talk about the properties too, right? The physical properties came up with a lot of first and second derivatives of the, of the free energy. Uh, we don't have time to talk about them, but I do have a couple of tables to show that how the typical uh, properties we measure are related to the derivatives of the free energy function. And uh, now you can see that that's where I came with the genome concept back uh, uh, 20 years ago. The idea when I started uh, as a faculty at, uh, at, the, at, the, at the Penn State, I was thinking, you know, we got to do something new, right? You always do that. So at that time, uh, you probably know that the Human Genome Project was very successful. You know, it was close to the end of, of that uh, big, big billion dollars uh, project. And then Kaifer was the best successful too. It, it takes individual faces as a building blocks. So then I thought maybe we should have material genome, okay? Of course, this, you cannot just be invented, right? You have got some, why, you got some inspiration. So we, we got a kind of few interesting projects from NSF and NASA at that time. We got an education program to talk about some of the dynamics, kinetics, okay? Then we, we worked on the nickel base alloy. Then we, we talked about the ITI, the information technology research. So that was uh, actually, if you go back to data science, I think that a program, ITR program, may be considered the, the one uh, where NSF really put money on that direction, because that's a huge program. I still remember it was the year 2000, I was talking to the program manager and the, uh, the top of the bigger program. He said, he said, you know, it's a quick, the bigger program is coming up, NSF. It's a huge one, he said. Turned out it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar uh, for, 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 I think for like uh, five to 10 years, I forgot exactly now. So that really gave a lot of inspiration about the, the data and the, the genomic aspects of it. Then we also got a center uh, to, to, to realize those kind of ideas with the industry. So then I, I got this Metal Geno Incorporated company, which is my, my company in 2002. And then we, you know, everyone knows that. Uh, Oh, then we also formed the Metal Genome Foundation uh, two, uh, four years ago, tried to pr promote uh, this kind of a computational uh, based research and tools too. All right, so we talk about this uh, building block materials, we talk about the experiments and modeling, we talk about the spin the uh, bird and the cage. So we actually cover a lot of uh, horizons. Uh, what do we do? Of course, we do experiment. So what are our experiments then? Experiments actually are statistic sampling of uh, uh, multi-scale configurations. Like we talk about the bird in the cage, right? So you sample, if you sample very fast, you see the cage and the bird. If you sample very slow, you see bird in the cage. So two experiments, okay? Two experiments. So it's on different configurations or the mixture of configurations, okay? And then you try to, you try to figure out what are those configurations, right? Then you try to do some experiment, figure out the, the physics behind it. Now you see the bird in the cage is two configurations, the cage and the bird. And where the interaction is so fast, you see the bird in the cage. Okay, so you try to understand uh, that observation. Then you do a model, right? You do a model. Model, you, model, you get a model, you get a few parameters. Then you say, okay, you can, for that, that example, you can say, okay, how fast the spinning will give you the observation, the bird in the cage. Okay, so that's your model. You feed you feed your model based on experiments, then you say, okay, now I'm gonna predict it. Right? But you see that, that that's not really truly predictive because you have to have the observation as the input to it. And the truly prediction that the tool we have today is quantum mechanics, which is realized by density function theory. So that's truly predictive because it really does not require any observation you have. Uh, it is thus, of course, it itself has some approximations, but those approximations are not related to your observation. That's the key. It's independent. They're independent. 
And the, if you look at the quantum mechanics of density function theory, it really talk about the gone state. It says uh, for any system, they be gone state at zero Kelvin and it has a unique uh, electron density. Okay, that's basically what it means. Okay, but of course we want to do, talk about at a different, uh, uh, at a finite temperature. So they are talking about the different configurations, right? Including the ground state. But most time we use very few uh, configurations. And also we do statistics mechanics based on total energy. Uh, so if you show that, that's actually the limitation of it. And yet, because it's so complex, so we, uh, the, as scientists, engineers, we say, oh, maybe we should, uh, we should uh, make it work. We need to do some approximations, like a hybrid uh, a, a model, like uh, effect Hamiltonian, then do MDMC simulations, the cost green, the DFT, and the CAFAD plus DFT. Okay, that's also the hybrid system. So you get some, you get some model, uh, then you get some DFT, you put them together, and then do some predictions. So what does entropy do, uh, does, which I'm going to talk today, is that we take the quantum mechanics, take statistics mechanics, okay? But the question is, is here already, right? What's new? Okay. The first new thing is that you get a lot, a lot more states, okay? Not just a few states. You want to get all states, possible states, okay? How do you know all possible states? You just change all the internal degree of freedoms. You sample all the possible internal degree of freedoms. You think it's a, a Gaudic, we call it a Gaudic configurations. And then you can predict the free energy. That's important. DFT, we talk about zero Kelvin, but DFT has capability to predict the free energy at a finite temperatures for each configuration. Okay. And then put them back, you statistic mechanics. Now you see the difference here. The, the classical one uses total energy, but because it's very difficult, people go to this hybrid system. Okay, like a class expansion and a class of variation method and so forth. But if we don't do that, the approximation, we take the DFT calculation, we take the free energy to the partition function, then we'll be able to predict the system without knowing uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what it may happen. So that's what the, the, the entropy is about. So again, we do not, before I did the bird and the cage experiment, and now we do real experiment, real materials experiment, sorry, material experiment. So the material experiment, we take the, the material is let it titanate. Okay. That is a very electric material. We know that the low temperature, low temperature, you measure it you by X-ray measurements, you get the CA ratio, right? So the tetragonal. And then the titanium atom moves away from the center, you get a polarization. Okay. So at the low temperature, the tetragonal is very electric, polarized tetragonal. All right, but if you increase temperature, it's the keep, it keep the measurement, right? Now your temperature goes up. What temperature goes up does is that the, the atom starts to, to move more, just like that, 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 that bird in the cage, right? Uh, uh, trope. So the, the atom starts to move more, okay? They start interacting with each, with each other more. Then what do you find? Do the measurement again. You find that the C ratio is decreasing. That means going this way. And the A, A, A axis is expanding, right? Okay, exciting. That's what I see. Then you see at the critical point, at not a critical, at one temperature, you find that the C and A equal to each other. So you say, oh, not get a track, a cubic now, right? Cubic. Uh, you also find that there the, is no polarization. You can, it doesn't have any polarization anymore. It's zero polarization. Now you see, that's observation, just like it's a bird in the cage. Uh, it's a, you, you, don't, you don't change the spin rate, uh, but you, you increase temperature. So the question is, is that observation is correct or not, right? It's correct or not. So then now you start to experiment, right? So X-ray is a measurement, is one observation. Can we do different observation? Okay, now we have, we have tools, we can do that. So we do a, a virtual experiment, which is a, a initial molecular dynamic simulation. So you get this one, so it is cubic, right? It's cubic, it's a pubic, cubic lattice. Okay, but this time it's not only one lattice, one unit cell, but a multiple unit cell. Put them together because X rays of uh, X ray observation is scattering is uh, as average. So average everything to be cubic. Okay, that's fixed. Then I look at each atom, titanium in the middle, and how it reacts with with its uh, oxygen and reacts with the lead. I can measure it, right? I can measure. It. I can measure time. So what do you find? So I give it a high temperature first. High temperature. You see that? You see that the, the atom goes the the new goes like this. Then after a while, it goes like that, or goes like this. So it, have, uh, it changes the orientation of the C axis. Okay. 
And if you decrease temperature, you find that if you decrease temperature, you find that it changes less frequent. Now, that means that the high temperature changes very fast, but low temperature changes a little bit slower, okay? So you now I think with the X-ray, right? The X-ray, the X-ray. Now, if the X-ray is fast enough, you can, you can see those changes. Then you say, oh, it's another tetragonal cubic. But then at the high temperature is so fast, you cannot see them anymore. It's the average effect, right? Then it's cubic, okay? That's what happened. Yeah. So that's black line, as I showed before. So you make the measurements, you got to see a ratio equal to one. Okay. However, if you look at the individual atoms, individual titanium, you find that it's most times it's tetragonal. That's the red one for the simulation I showed you before. Then you look at the literature, turned out in 1994, people also measured it already, use X-ray absorption fine structure, local structure uh, the, the observation, they find that the blue line is indeed, the titanium is, is polarized. And you have see a ratio all the time within the local ones, even though overall it's cubic, but the local uh, new cells, they are all tetragonal with polarization too. You know, also calculate titanium displacement, as again, it's the, 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 you know, we have the uh, X-ray, we have this uh, neutron, uh, then we have the XF, we have the, uh, uh, the initial molecular dynamic simulation. So what does it mean? Just go back to the same thing as like the cage, uh, but in the cage, right? So actually, uh, even though you see the bird in the cage, but in that, uh, in the in the reality, right, because the two sides they flip each other so often, it it makes you observe uh, the uh, the the bird in the cage. It's same thing here. So you actually have all the tetragonal, okay? But however, the tetragonal change so fast. When you look at them by X-ray, it's all cubic. But if you look at the individual titanium atoms, they're always tetragonal with polarization. So that's the picture. So both are correct, right? Both are correct. It's the scale, it's the resolution you have. Now, if you think about this one, if you want to predict the property of the cubic, you must know all those uh, uh, configurations are tetragonal. So you have to put a tetragonal and you have to predict the cubic. So that's really the, 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 the message behind this one. Okay, that's what we came up with this uh, uh, Zentropy approach, how to do that. Okay, but of course, the, it's, it's, uh, Zentropy is uh, it's two words, it's Z plus Entropy. Z is a, a, a partition function in statistical mechanics. It's Zustad Sumer in German, and it's sum of states, basically. And then the Entropy drive a change of system based on second law, and it's also out of statistical mechanics. Okay, so now you see two connection now, right? And then the entropy is basically, let's count all possible entropies in a system, starting from electrons, okay? Then electrons is from quantum mechanics. So you take the quantum mechanics, put a statistical mechanics on top of it, then you predict the total entropy. That's what is entropy is about, okay? And, the, and the entropy is this term, oh, uh, yeah, the entropy is this term uh, uh, was suggested by postdoc uh, in, in 2021 when he gave a talk like this. You know, 2021, we had a COVID, so I gave a talk. There, 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 there are some people, a, a, I don't know how many, 70, 80 people, 70, 80 people at the symposium, at the seminar, they, they ask us the questions. Uh, then I, we, we asked, I was saying that we don't have the name for our approach. Uh, Josh said, oh, now you should call it the Zentropy. Oh, we like it. So, so we call it Zentropy. We started using it in our publication, but the work we started is 2002, 2008, like that. All right. So uh, give quickly it goes to the statistical mechanics, the partition function, probability of configurations, and it calculates the energy, and it gets the entropy okay, of the system. Now you see that this statistical the standard statistical use the EK, and then if you think about a system only with one configuration, for example, a very very low temperature, right? Uh, you have then F equal to EK, but we also know F equal to EK minus TSK. That means SK equal to zero. That means all the configurations in this formula will have zero entropy. That means they are pure quantum state. They only have one state, each of them. They can have two states. The energy can be different, but their state is only one. But when you talk about real materials, right? It's not. Real materials, you have much more quantum states in one configuration, okay? So that's why this, this equation is very difficult to use okay? because it's very hard to, to counter all the pure quantum states. So what it means is that if you take a standard statistical mechanics, you calculate entropy. Okay, KB, PK, log PK, that's the probability of each configuration. However, if each configuration also has its own entropy, then you have to add one term. 
you can you can go down continuously until you reach the electron, right? Okay. Your upscale could be any scale you want, but you can, you can decompose it and nested the formula go to all the way down to electrons. Well, the reason you go to electrons is because you can use quantum mechanics. Okay. But if you talk about all individual electrons, then it's not going to work because there are too many of them to count for. That's why a uh, quantum mechanics was a theory. Uh, really not been uh, very useful. Well, it's useful, but from the computation point of view, uh, it's very hard until the density function theory comes into play uh, to be in invented in 1960s. Okay, so summarize about Zentropy is really quantum mechanics uh, plus statistical mechanics. Well, we, we believe that if you count all the entropy, uh, they put capital one should equal to the experiment measurements. Experiment, you do not measure entropy directly, you measure the capacity to integration. Okay, that's what we learned from, uh, uh, from thermodynamics. Okay, and then you can for energy now. For energy now, we know that you could do the individual configuration, and there's this uh, configuration entropy among the different com configurations. And then you can start to predict. You can talk about the uh, fluctuation of the, the configurations, disorder, you can talk about the inharmonicity. You can talk about the, the, the emerging uh, microscopic properties, the uh, singularity. That's the, the most uh, emerging you could get, the singularity, the system diverges. All right, so I have one slide to go through the uh, density function theory. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, quantum mechanics in the 1920s, uh, 40 years later, uh, uh, Kang uh, Xiang, uh, actually Kang, come and his uh, a, a, a paper in 1964 talk about the exact theory of many body systems. In 1965, they developed the exchange correlation functional to solve that equations, like to get an electron density of the state. And now the, the, the classical ones, you, you can do the ground state at zero Kelvin. You can calculate the, a, a, the a unique uh, ele electron density. So you can give you the, the, the ground state. But it, when temperature goes to finite, finite temperature, you can talk about the uh, electronic uh, uh, some electronic contribution and the vibration contribution. Now you see that entry is not no longer zero, so it's not a pure quantum state. That means you cannot use the statistical mechanics uh, before. And then if you talk about all other non quantum states, and then each of them has a unique ele electron density, and then you can sample all the degrees of freedom. And you can calculate the, a, the property zero Kelvin and the final temperature, that's the same method. Now you say you can get a free energy for all kinds of configurations, stable ones, stable ones. If, if it's not stable, then you will not get the entropy, right? Because it's not defined. And turn out the uh, entropy can predict the non -sta uh, unstable states. Okay. All right, so now let's look at the st 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 standard statistical mechanics. And we got this uh, EK, right? F equal EK here. So this applies to pure quantum state, okay, with zero entropy for each configuration. But if it is not, if each configuration has its own entropy, then we have to change it. We have to add uh, the entropy of each configuration with a probability in front of it. Then we also get a free energy. Would we also have FK instead of EK because each configuration has its own entropy. Then our partition function is always different instead of EK, which is FK, and, uh, and then into the PK. And we, we didn't know that before, but well, now we look in the literature, that actually there are quite a few papers show this equation, but nobody used it. Nobody used it. We are probably the first one really use this equation uh, to, 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 to solve the problems. So that's, that's very significant because most of the people do is that you can calculate FK, right? Then you do this hybrid model, as I mentioned before. They, 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 they do FK, they, do, they develop Hamiltonian for the system based on the FK. Then you do the MDMC simulation. In that case, you have another model pro uh, procedure. Your data is not as accurate as, as the DFT itself before. So then you lose a lot of features of that one. And when SK equals zero, then these two are identical. That's also we, we like it very much because if, if each configuration is the pure quantum state, then the original statistical mechanics uh, is recovered. So that that's, that's give us a, a, a peace of mind that the approach we have is actually valid 
uh, is not in contradiction with the statistical mechanics. So I want to show you one example uh, about the uh, ion three platinum. This way, it's, uh, it's, uh, it has a negative sum expansion in some temperature range. So this plot shows the mean sum expansion coefficient of this compound at ambient pressure as function of temperature. The symbols are from three sets of experiments. Okay. Of course, you see the experiment has uncertainty, right? Could it be, uh, could it be, could it be due to the material's impurity? It could be because the measurement method, and a lot of uh, errors could be introduced. But anyway, uh, if you look at these two, right? These two looks like they're more close to each other. Uh, uh, and then you see that. Uh, first, there's, there's some, the linear sum expansion is, uh, coefficient is positive, that should be. Okay, then reach a maximum, then start to decrease, then become negative. That means the volume is a shrink when temperature goes up. And then it continues to be negative, then become the, 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 the minimum, then start to become less than negative, and become zero, become positive again. And this line is from prediction of our model, our theory. We don't have a model here. That's very important. There's no model for us. Okay. We just calculate different configurations and they put it in statistical mechanics. So there's no model, no fitting parameters. Uh, this is the practice here. So how do we solve this ion 3 platinum? Ion 3 platinum is a L12 structure. So we take a supercell. Now, you have DFT, you have the fixed supercell size, right? So we take 12 atoms, okay? 12 atoms. So 12 atoms, you have to be nine, a three in the cell. So you have nine ion atoms. So, so you have two to nine power, give you 512 configurations. Uh, but some of them are the same because of the symmetry. So you can be called, called up multiplicity of that configuration. But anyway, here shows the, uh, the, the ferromagnetic state of the spin goes one direction. Then you, you start to turn one spin, two spin, three spin, and four spin, and so forth, right? Turn other spins in different direction. Then you got the different configurations. When you get different as I mentioned, it's 512, but the only 37 are unique if the symmetry. And then you can calculate their uh, energy at zero Kelvin. That's the first one. You see that the uh, ground state and the non-ground states. The important thing observation is that the non-ground states, they have smaller volume. That's very independent observation. And then you do the free energy calculation, right? Free energy calculation, you calculate free energy as, fun, as function of temperature at, at the ambient pressure. And you find that the, the ground state is a difference. This ground state is always uh, stable, has low lowest energy, lowest energy. However, the difference between the uh, different configurations decreases because divided by KBT. So the thermal energy makes the energy closer, okay? And that means they're going to have a probability will be higher, right? So probably at zero Kelvin is 100% probability for the ground state. Increase the temperature is 100%. But if you increase temperature above like a, a over 50 Kelvin, then the, the low energy configuration starts to show probability. It's, it's not a non zero anymore. So probably here, the probability you see is, is all 100%. And then at this temperature range, this is normalized to the, to the critical temperature 50-50 here. And you see the, 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 the total non ground state population increases. Have you realized there's only one ground state, but there are hundreds of the uh, non ground state, right? So even though the energy is higher, but they the, the, the overtake, they overwhelm the ground state. So ground state even becomes less than 15%. Okay, less than 15% at a high temperature, even though the ground state has low energy. So now you see. From some dynamical point of view, classical some point of view, the ground state should be always stable. Nothing else should happen. However, from statistical some dynamical point of view, and the ground state will decrease, the population will decrease to, to 50%. So we decided that uh, if the ground state becomes less than 50%, that means we do sampling of the system, you will not see that state anymore. Okay, you will see a mixture of everything. So that's where we decided that's where the uh, system changed from paramagnetic to paramagnetic. Even though the old both spins zero, but it still have local spins. Then you calculate the, 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 the magnetization as function of temperature with the old spin, 
Okay, overall spin, okay, hundred percent at zero Kelvin, and then the percentage of the overall spin will decrease. It becomes zero at a certain temperature. Okay, so that means you know we know that it's not exact at this is fifty fifty because you have short range order in there, right? So you have some short range order in there at the, above the, the transition temperature. Again, symbols are from experiments, and the, the line is from the prediction. Oh, it's, it's pretty decent, right? Consider that we we only have a, a, a five hundred twelve configurations, and we only have twelve atoms in our simulation cell. And they can fix that one at different temperature and the pressure because you do different pressure now, right? You get an EV curve, you do different pressure, and you find that the, against the temperature and the pressure, the pressure is decreasing because the minus the P is our, our potential in thermodynamics. You see, again, the symbols are from experiments. Okay, nine is from prediction. So they, uh, above here is the second order transition. Below there is the first order. The first order seems to be much, uh, some error, large, large error here, but the, the second order transition is beautifully predicted, including this critical point. So we can, we can convert the pressure to its conjugate variable to volume, then we got this phase diagram, temperature volume phase diagram. You see now, you see now give me speed of the gap. It's not because different composition, same comment, different magnetic spin configurations. Again, each side is has a mixture of different configurations, right? Different configurations. The so interesting observation is that in this purple uh, area, the different pressures. In the purple area, that's what have negative some expansion. So you see the band there. Which give you negative some expansion. Okay. Second, again, this is really predicted with DFT calculations, putting some uh, statistics mechanics, and pre predict this transition. The only thing we have to uh, assume is that when the transition takes place, we find that 50% 50, 50 is a good one. You can also also heat capacity or magnetization and other, other quantities to compare, but we find this one is the most robust comparison. And it, yeah, here we show that. You can also talk about the curvature change, the, the degree of disorder, okay? Actually, to take different kind of disorder, it's actually pretty close. They predicted the, the, the inflection point, okay? That's where the, the speed, of, speed of change change direction. First, it's very fast and becomes slower, okay? So you can do different kind of the, uh, study, uh, the, the, the sampling, so to speak, and get different data there. But it's very close. So the latest one we did is each nicolate. It's called a strongly correlated materials from the uh, solid state physics. It's very similar, right? So again, here you have nickel. It's uh, it's uh, magnetic. Each is not oxygen is not. Uh, but it's, this unit um, is much bigger. It's eighty atoms. Remember, previous to twelve atoms, right? It's eighty atoms. So it's very difficult. Turns out the nature uh, plays a uh, dice again. Uh, is that the, that the sum of the uh, uh, nickel has no spin, a very small spin, okay? So that makes the uh, calculation much simpler. You can remove half of the calculations, right? Half of the calculation you don't need to do. Again, we do the energy at zero Kelvin. Now you see, this is very different than, the, than before, right? Before the, 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 the metastable wise is, is, goes this, this way. This was almost like doesn't change. Okay, almost doesn't change. So it doesn't cost each other. Much, and then you can do the free energy calculation, the same approach. Now you do this again. This is a comp comparison. Uh, the pop uh, po there is the population probability, a hundred percent the antifire magnetic state, that's going state. Then the populations are the decrease and reach fifty percent. I take fifty percent. So it's cross fifty percent is hundred forty four Kelvin. The experiment, I'm going to show next slide, is hundred forty five Kelvin. Again, there's no uh, approximate, no feeding parameters here. But however, if we take the standard statistic mechanics, that means take the total energy in the partition function of the configurations, we get 81 Kelvin. Okay, that just shows the importance of use F K instead of E K in the calculation. Okay, so that means that uh, well, I think that's why that's why we we were trying to call ourselves. Approach uh, statistic mechanics, it confuses with people. Uh, so we, we, we took the suggestion from, from Josh to use called Zentropy. Zentropy basically means that this standard statistic mechanics take the EK and the uh, Zentropy approach take FK in the calculation. And then here comes the PT phase diagram. 
you can see the big difference uh, from the FK and EK calculation. Uh, again, experiment 145 Kelvin. And there's no other experiments yet. Uh, we can do more experiments for the function, function pressure. I know the ASU and not just build a very, very large a, a high pressure experiment. And also, also, I know that the University of Arizona also has uh, this geoscientist with the high pressure. So this, we can do the high pressure prediction. We can also do short range ordering now. I uh, try to figure out short range ordering, the local ones, right? And, the, and how that changes. All right, so I'll go back to the, 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 the Latin I started before. So, you know, Penn State is it's, uh, one of the leading university at least in the world about the ferry electrics, okay? So I, I always wanted to do this one, but I haven't figured out how to do that. Uh, I did not figure out until a couple of years ago, uh, I got a vision scholar. Then we, did, we finished that 2015 PIB paper on the, on the AMD simulation. Then I realized that we, we did different configurations, right? We need to figure out the configuration. We have the a ground, uh, uh, tetragonal polarized one and the cubic one, okay? But the cubic one is not the uh, is not really the the, the 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 configuration behind it because behind it are all the tetragonal polarized configuration. Then realize that okay, when the spin change, right? You have spin, all spin up first polarization. If you want change to this way, you get ninety degree domain war. This is one, right? And then if you if the spin turned that way, you get hundred eighty degree domain war. It turned out, of course, that has been studied extensively in the ferry electric community. And in 2002, the first paper calculated used DFT, calculated the domain war energy for the 190, 180, and the 90 degree domain wars. Then we said, okay, if we take this the three configurations, right? We take the tetragonal and without domain war, that's our gone state. Then we take the two states, uh, two map configurations. One is 180 domain wars, another one is 90 domain wars. Then we take the, take the data from the literature, the energy. So people can the, the, the 90, 90 degree has a 35 millijoule and 180 is 132. Of course, there are type of configurations that people have proved that in the literature that they, they have very high energy. That means very, very high energy, probably zero, right? Even 132, 180 degree domain was also almost zero probability. Very, very low because you have 35 and uh, zero, right? The next one zero, gonna say zero. So this two actually dominance. So the same approach we calculated this time we did not get an entropy yet. Okay, we did get entropy, and turned out the prediction is, is not bad. It's just thirteen degree off from the experiments. This gives two indications. One is that this this given configuration have probably very similar entropy. Okay, so it doesn't affect the probability if you add entropy. Second, if we add entropy, that's what we can work on, they maybe give you almost the exact prediction. Okay, so that's what we're working on now. But anyway, you think with this one, right? Take this uh, partition function, take the, so the main thing here is get the configurations for us to understand it. Then take the data from the literature and predict transition. Now, nice thing about that one, that, a, that, a, that a two side a, a, a bird in the cage, a, a, a summer swap. Now you have three, three sides, right? Now you see you have the three sides, three sides, the dice, okay? Now you flip them, you actually have two because this one's almost zero. So you have two sides. One is the a, a tetragonal polarized, another one is 90 degree. You flip them enough, you get a cubic structure, okay? Of course, the 90 degree domain one has four configurations. So the four to one, okay? It's four 90 degree domain wall configurations. They have multiplicity, and they, the gonna is one, 180 degrees is also one. Okay, that's one of the reasons. And 90, not only two reasons, right? One is low energy, and otherwise is a four multiplicity, this one. So you actually have, a, you think you have a, a four dice, four sides, four sides of the dice, okay? Three, nine, five, a three 90 degree domain was, four 90 degree domain was one, a, a ferry electric gonna stay. Now, if you, if you spin that slice at a high temperature, you'll be able to see the transition to cubic at 776 Kelvin. All right. Uh, so to do that, we need a lot of tools. Okay, so we give a, a lot of tools to do that. We call it the ocean of data, is data and the tool to combine together. So you first have to generate data. Okay, you have the, the free energy, not the only zero K, right? Free energy. So we develop a code, it's called the DFTTK, which is the free energy calculation for any configuration. 
And we know that free energy calculation is definitely takes time. So we also have a, a machine learning code, but this one's only for zero Kelvin at the moment. Uh, we're going to, uh, some people at the NIST are developing the one for the entropy, we're going to implement that one. And then we'll compile experiment data, right? We want to compare with the experiment data and always use experiment data. And we're developing one called a Pi's entropy to put a, what we talk about today in the software, uh, which Dr. Yuan, uh, Professor Yuan in at Penn State is working on, uh, focus on that one. After you got all the data, you need to compile them into databases. Okay, we have pack have an SBA to combine the database with the multi-component system. If we don't do multi-component system, that will be sufficient for just one compound, right? But let it terminate. We don't need this one. This is sufficient. However, if you want to do the let it terminate uh, in, uh, in another, uh, in lead, and lead oxide, uh, titanium oxide, right? Then you need to have a database top of multi-component, multi-phases. And then we also do this uh, a short course on training. And uh, we have a new program to start uh, to, to make it into uh, the, to the uh, community code people can use. Do I have uh, three minutes? Is that, a, do I have four minutes? Krish, Krishna? We have, we have plenty of time. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay, so uh, I do want to go a little bit, uh, I know that all, most grad students here, I want to talk a little bit more intro, but actually general about some of the mechanics. So I talk about quantum mechanics. I talk about the, uh, the, the, uh, the statistical mechanics, right? But, but we also have a we, we also talk about the classical thermodynamics. Okay. So I want to I want to make these connections. I want to connect the classical thermodynamics, the quantum to statistical, and even to the irreversible thermodynamics. So this will be typically learned from thermodynamics uh, kind of a cycle. We got the for a closed equilibrium system, we got this entropy chain definition. If it if it, if you open the system, you add heat, you add the mass, then you get the mass entropy contribution. If the system is not in equilibrium, you get another one entropy reduction due to internal process. So this equation covers equilibrium, open system, non-equilibrium. So I call the open non-equilibrium system to the entropy chain. But okay, this is only change, but we really want to get entropy itself, right? Then we have statistical mechanics. Okay. That's what is it, we know this equation, they got both my entropy. And uh, they were actually, this equation is a, is a special case of the Gibbs entropy with the probability. If each configuration has similar probability, it gives us the Boltzmann equation. Okay. So in truth, we should use this one as a demonstrated today. We should, we should not use this one because most of the time, the they different configurations have different probabilities. Now, quantum mechanics give us a very, 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 very critical importance as I showed today, right? If I don't use that one, uh, my, my prediction is way off from experiments. That's why, that's one of the reasons I believe why the quantum mechanics uh, from the experiment point of view, people say, oh, you know, your prediction is not good. It doesn't agree with my experiments. Okay? Because quantum mechanics, uh, most of them predict the one to a few configurations, or most of the ground state configurations. But we have different ones. So for different configurations, we can calculate the, uh, uh, their free energy. Okay, the phonon. Of course, you can do E minus TS, you get the uh, electron contribution. Okay, so you put them together, now you get a quantum mechanics here, right? So I have statistical quantum mechanics. That's where I should agree with the experiments as we demonstrated. Okay, demonstrated. So now the question is that, where do we go from there? So we've got some dynamics I showed before. That's our thermodynamics, right? And then we got our function here. So if, you, if you, most of, well, I would think it most, it's almost all textbooks uh, uh, focus on the first uh, terms. Okay, last term is, is dropped. Why is it dropped? Because it was dropped by Gibbs in 1870s. Because he was focused on experiment, e equilibrium system. When equilibrium system, this one equals zero. Okay. So that's called a classical thermodynamics. When this equals zero. However, when this equals zero, does not mean that equilibrium. That's very important. It is equilibrium is no driving force for the internal process, but it could be frozen into. So that's the non ground states. It's metastable. You have a, you have a fixed configuration of internal internal configurations. That in, that internal configuration is not an equilibrium configuration, but it's frozen in either by your theory, right, the DFK, or by experiment because the diffusion is so slow, nucleation is so slow. So classical thermodynamics actually already involved long equilibrium. It's for the frozen in configurations. 
And then we talk about the quantum mechanics. It really calculates the SK and FK, not only EK. That's very important. Okay. And then we put a statistical mechanics. It put this uh, entropy has two parts. There's a, st there's a, a standard uh, statistical mechanics and there's the extra from the quantum mechanics. So this formula including includes the quantum contributions. Okay. So that's beauty. Now, now as I think uh, in my opinion, it's really the first time we put the, a complete quantum mechanics into the framework of uh, thermodynamics through the statistical mechanics. So statistical mechanics is not the end because you need to still get the free energy to calculate it, right? So what the irreversible thermodynamics is the last term is not equal to zero, okay? It's not equal to zero. So that means uh, is something is happening there, okay? Okay. Of course, if not equal to zero, that means D is not equal to zero. D is not equal to zero, right? Now, uh, both of these of them zero. They get a reverse first of the name, the process. So how to do that? Okay, so that's what our latest work is on the direction that basically you have to find a relation, right? How do you kind of the side change? Okay, when the side change is flux, right? It's flux, okay? It's flux, so you can do the you can entry production. There is a flux, okay? You can actually configure, you can actually examine it, and see how it works. Okay, it's entry production rate. Then you can do the volume change. You can A times delta Z distance. Now you get the distance into it. You get the time and distance into some dynamics. Then you get a flux and the driving force. So you get a flux driving force. That's the important definition. The flux of one, one molar quantity, volume, whatever you have, is the, is the ratio change of that molar quantity. That molar quantity must be proportional. Uh, uh, this must be proportional to the driving force. The driving force is a conjugate variable. That's very important. Okay, but in the literature, in the literature, oh, I have the next slide maybe. Uh, maybe should be here. I didn't play. Okay. Anyway, and uh, there you can do the calculation of entry production. It's always positive. That's also that's in the process taking place. Okay, it's very different from on saga formula. I know that is some of you are doing this work. Our soccer formula says that J, the flux of one component for the, the species is proportional to all driving forces, all potentials in the system. Okay, which uh, if you're interested, I have in this paper I discussed why this equation is incorrect. This equation is phenomenological. Okay, it derives from phenomenal. Why is that? It means if you change the temperature, you can you get a diffusion, right? That's right. Temperature does drive diffusion, but not in this equation format. Okay, so that's where they derive it called a theory of cross phenomena. Cross phenomena is that again this flux equation. Okay, then it's important to realize that the molar quantity, this is x j, is solely driven, solely driven by its conjugated potential gradient. X and Y, they are conjugated conjugated variables in the in the combined law. So where does the cross phenomena come in them? It's because the potential gradient of this, this, uh, this uh, uh, variable is a function of all other potentials. So if you do this gradient of this one, you can decompose it into, into different variables in its own, own molar quantity gradient, that's a composition, for example. If the chemical potential, is, this is a concentration gradient. But if you take this system only as fixed law, so fixed law is inaccurate, okay? Fixed law is inaccurate. I, I really think we should not teach fixed law in our class anymore because you have other contributions there. Okay. Another composition, for example, then temperature gradient, the electric field gradient, electric field, or magnetic field, right? Or it's a stress, like a, a, like a peer and the, a, we were discussing before the seminar here. So the, the, this is what I, because this is a phenomenal, this observation, observation temperature can drive a diffusion, for example. It's not because you need the temperature equation here, it's because the chemical potential is a function of temperature. All right, so we can allow the examples here. All the, all the examples we have in the literature, some electric, some diffusion, electromigration, electrocaloric, electromechanics, this is very electric stuff, and up here diffusion. For example, we talk about up here diffusion by darken, and it turned out that if you use fixed law, it's not working, okay? But if you use this formula, it's gonna work. And uh, I, we do have examples showing the uh, C back coefficient. Again, C back coefficient uh, in the literature is always a kinetic coefficient, but we demonstrated that is the derivative of the, uh, so the second derivative of the free energy. 
I am sure that uh, some people do not agree with me, but I hope with them to look at our paper and uh, see if they can be convinced. If it's not, we can set up a meeting to discuss. And this is the properties. The second, there's the first derivative of the potential to a model quantity, give us all these physical properties, some expansion, paraelectric coefficients, uh, paramagnetic coefficients, piezoelectric moduli, moduli, and piezoelectricity. All of those are the second derivative of the free energy to a model quantity, okay? There's a, when I talk about this cross phenomenon, there's another set of uh, derivatives is between two potentials. That was very rarely discussed in literature. Uh, it's, for example, I mentioned if it's the electron, chem chemical pot electron potential to temperature derivative, that gives you super coefficient. Okay, so these are the new quantities we think it should have a, a, a large impact on, on what we'll talk about the properties of materials and also for material design purpose. All right, for that one, I'm going to summarize a uh, talk about the entropy theory. Uh, it counts the total entropy of a system by combining quantum mechanics and statistical mechanics. It's, uh, it, you can go from stat start from electrons going all the way to whatever scale you have. So it's, uh, it's a nested formula. Second one is the predictive. Okay, it only has a, a approximation from DFT, and then you need to figure out all the configurations. Like again, start from the ground state, you can predict a, a, a properties which you think is abnormal, like the negative sum expansion. Terminal is not abnormal, and uh, it's not actually not part of bounding too. Okay, it's not actually part of bounding. People think that negative sum expansion, some expansion, your bound should go to zero, right? Or it's going negative. Okay, your force going negative. No, force doesn't go negative. That's just your. Oh, that's just like a, like a bird in the cage. Bird is not in the cage. It's your observation shows the bird in the cage. That is reality, but then that is the case. And then it, it, it enables integration of the classical thermodynamics, the quantum, the statistical, and the irreversible thermodynamics. You can put them together now because you can, we can get the fully consideration of the entropy because entropy drives everything. And uh, now I hope you, convince, uh, you are convinced, with, you agree with me now. Uh, previously, uh, uh, at the beginning 20 years ago, I think uh, the individual phases are the building blocks. Now I think uh, the configurations are the building blocks. They are part of the, the different configuration, configuration put together to form a phase. The phase probably can be abnormal, but the configurations themselves are normal. You the only put them together, you get nonlinear interaction through the entropy term. That's a logarithmic term. Okay, so we are now trying to apply it to different day phenomena. Uh, this is our new project we are starting. If you go to this web page, you will see that. I want to use the entropy theory to predict the transformative functionalities uh, for a range of materials. Again, we're also open for collaborations. If you have things uh, you would like to work with us together, we'd be love to work with you. To, to, to end it, I want to show that there's two papers, which is a recent paper we have 2020 and 2022, and which summarizes most of the approaches we have. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Liu. I think uh, we can open up the floor floor for some questions. Any anyone? Uh, there are some few hands that were raised. Hi, it's great. Uh, great talk. Uh, I. <laughs> Fortunately, this is the third time I hear this talk over the past few months, so that's helped me understand. <laughs> and, uh, and frankly, every time I learn new things. Uh, I, 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 the, so today I, I just realized, because you told me uh, you and your students are calculating melting temperature and liquids has just so many configurations, right? So I think I, think I have an approach to to sample just a few and make it simple, but I'll discuss it with you in the afternoon. That'd be nice. We can write a paper together now. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay. So I, I have a maybe it's almost an ignorant question, but in in your Zentropy, I mean, uh, in the models that you presented, um, has the role of vibrational entropy been taken into account fully? I mean. Because in some sense, right, if the vibrational part is in some sense you are accounting for the different degrees of vibrational freedom, uh, and 
weighing it with respect to the temperature according to Bose-Einstein and statistics. So is that something that that's inherently taken into account or uh, or or is there somehow the 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 additional entropy term that you're accounting for is taking into account the vibra compensating for the vibration entropy part? that's actually a great point we have not solved that problem yet and our vibration approach calculation is for individual configurations right you get 100 configurations calculate all the vibration yeah. property and then we do this uh, zenjobi approach then we got the total entropy yeah. but we cannot go back to get the formal density of states yet we, yeah. we cannot resolve back so what happens here okay. that's our problem now okay so we're trying to figure that out but we have no solutions yet and even you actually even want to go even further, even uh, further back even more you wanted to go back to even get the full spectrum right can mm -hmm. we put spectrum of a mixture of the configurations yes that's what yes they can even go back and say can we predict the electronic spectrum of the mixed states well that i think it's changing if you can get that problem solved that'd be fantastic <laughs> uh krishna i have a question about yeah Ankit. yeah uh, so my question is very much also in line of what krishna asked uh, i was originally going to ask you about the vibrational but uh, my question now is slightly different. So the configurational part of the entropy, uh, say if it has uh, two or three different configurations, so isn't the classical entropy already kind of having uh, the averaged entropy of state? Uh, and then if it is really supposed to be distinguished as one, two, and three, shouldn't this be, be a weighted mean? Uh, so as to how much time the system actually spends in each of these distinct states? Yeah, that actually, that, that's uh, exactly the, the question we had at the beginning. Yes. Actually, no, 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 that's quick. People ask us, did you double count the entropy, right? That's, that's, that's the question. Is, is the entropy double counted? Okay. So then we went back and we looked at it's not double counted because, uh, because you can think about it. If you start, that's, what, that's why our connection to the standard statistics is important. Okay. Suppose you have a pure quantum state, right? So now I'm have entropy because there's only one state, okay? Of course, the total energy changes the function temperature, but the configuration is only one, always one because it's a quantum state. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you see there's no contribution from each configuration to the total entropy, except the PK log of PK, yeah. okay? So now you think about okay, if one of them, one of the configuration has some entropy, how do you count that, that gets into the system? That is not in that anymore, it's not in your PK log of PK. So you have to add on top of it. Then each computer has this probability, so it, it is, is only part of, part of his entropy is contributed to the total entropy. That's the PKSK summation to that part. Okay. So, so it, it was, uh, we didn't actually, we, I didn't, uh, we couldn't answer, answer the question at the beginning. We didn't know. Then we figured out the, the pure quantum state, then you find a G. It's not double county anymore because you can go to state without a, uh, entropy, you have no contribution there. Right. So, so, so VK, if, uh, there's just a follow-up question on this. So if, say, for example, we suspect a system stays for a greater time, let's say we have some count of time and it stays for a larger time in a uh, configuration one and spends lesser time in configuration two. Uh, so that's where we start blurring off the, the, the difference between a metastable and a stable state, right? So I'm really talking about that line. Um, so shouldn't this be accounted for because if a system is just likely to yeah it's kind of yeah yeah let me finish your question sorry yeah so if, if this is the system is less likely to spend time in a given state based on the probability then it should have less contribution in an entropy yeah yeah it, it, it just uh, well with less or not it may be not 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 a fully clear Okay, because you, you can, for example, you can fix temperature, so you can have a heat, uh, entropy change outside with surroundings, right? So the system entropy may increase or decrease. We don't know that. Okay, yep. could it decrease? Yeah, could yep. decrease. Okay, the, the, yeah, you actually did a, a very, very critical point, which is, is that's why the last part, irreversible thermodynamics, works for us. Okay, we can predict the unstable state. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the key. That's really important because uh, you think about this one, you have metastable, stable, right? You can two configurations, separate two configurations. Right. Of course, each of the mix of configurations, right? But then you have to go from metastable to stable, right? Yeah. 
we can predict that barrier completely mm -hmm, mm -hmm. without any feeding parameter. Mm -hmm. Actually, yesterday was a question when I gave a talk, somebody asked a question, uh, say we have some trouble uh, for, for graphite and like, diamond, okay? And it, didn't realize that when we do this kind of uh, sampling, we, have, we don't have the equilibrium energy right. as our, our, our summation. We take at any fixed condition as our summation. Yeah. So you can predict the maximum, you can predict the inflection point, you can put everything you have in the system. And it's a very beautiful thing, which, which is because people ask this type of question. And the beautiful thing is that with all the configuration being stable, because that means no imaginary phenomenon, you can predict instability of a system. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I, I have a question. <clears throat> and Professor Liu, we're meeting after this, so we can continue the conversation later too um, as well. Um, so um, I work a lot in nanotechnology uh, where size dependent properties exist, surfaces. Uh, become very important surface energies. And uh, and is there a, a systematic way or of an approach where we can in, you know, include some of those effects into, uh, into what you're doing? Yeah, I, I think- uh, and yeah. It's a very I'm done broad that. question. Uh, yeah. You can I choose to answer it in, in, in any direction, please. Yeah, um, I, think, I think it's possible. The reason is because- I, yeah. I think your student is doing it, B <laughs> <laughs> That's good. See? That's good. That's good. Yeah, the idea, is, the idea is really that uh, you need to figure out the configurations. Okay. Now, you, you, the, the challenge you have now, the one challenge is that when the surface to the interior, you have continuous change, right? It can change. It's, it's, the case I talk about is the whole system homogeneous, right? right. When you have this location specific, Mixture. So that's, that's the only thing I could, I, I think is difference. You have the location, that means you take the location as subsystems you have. Then you add them together for your system. So you have to divide your in homogeneous system to homogeneous system in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the global scale, okay? Because in our case, it's local in homogeneous, global homogeneous, right? But you, in your case, it's uh, global in homogeneous. Okay, so you have to take, so that means you have to, div, div, uh, you have to divide your global into subsystems and solve them individually because each of them have different constraints. So I mean, individually, then put them back, I think you'll get the nano uh, behavior, in my opinion. I hope, that's a, I hope that's what the business is doing, but, uh, but uh, that, that, I, I, that, that's what I was thinking should be done. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. I think, um, Professor Liu, would it be okay if, um, like, some of the, the the audience reach out to you and email you uh, because some of them are going to watch it after the recording? Is that something okay with you? Yeah, that, that's perfect. Okay. Okay, I think this was a very very informative and a, you know, completely new. Uh, way for at least from a material science perspective on of thinking of thermodynamics of materials and I hopefully this gives rise to many more collaborations between the Arizona universities and Penn State on these ideas. So if there aren't any other questions from the students, uh, I think we should probably call it a day and once again let's thank Professor Yu for a great talk uh, and uh, you know hopefully this is one among the many you know, new ideas that come from Professor Liu's uh, group on, on these stuff. So with that, I'll first stop the recording if I can, and then... Um... Yeah, 